Vamos a dar comienzo a la So now we are going to start the presentation. So we are call the presenters. We are going to present a LAC 2024-4 the log of the assignments of the special reserves of IPv4 addresses for critical infrastructure. This was uh, drafted by three authors. So we ask Ricardo Patara, Hernan Archidiacono, and uh, Edwin to come uh, here. We remind uh, the speakers that they have 10 minutes to present it. And Edwin Salazar. Good morning, everyone. I'm Hernán Arcidiacono. We are here with uh, Ricardo and Edwin. The next slide, please. Let me give you a bit of the background. In October last year at the uh, event, uh, there were people of the community that approached uh, LAC IX uh, community, and uh, they were worried about uh, the potential risk the, that some assignment of the slash 15 that is reserved uh, for critical infrastructure might, there might be IXPs that uh, were not such. And despite uh, the uh, mechanism for control that LACNIC has, <coughs> that are described in the manual, no need to go through it now, that might uh, skip those controls and evade those, co those controls or with, uh, and uh, that there could be some fake assignments, well, fake, trucho in Argentinian uh, slang. So we... Uh, Listen to that. We paid attention uh, to that uh, concern, and we put together a working group. The three of us uh, are part of the working group. Uh, the, actually, there are six of us. And at the May event, we tried to understand what the controls were, what was already being done, and what could be added. And basically, what we concluded was that the controls are right. There's n we couldn't ask for more things, but that we could make it more transparent. That is, that, yes, assignments could be made more transparent, making it easier to um, uh, disclose uh, the, the information to the community, to make it available to the community, just in case somebody in the community could detect that some of the mechanisms had been evaded and for corrections to be made. and. Uh, well, the real thing is that uh, I won't read all this, but a policy basically proposes that uh, the information on uh, the assignments of slash 15s should be public and uh, easily uh, available. Today, they are public, but uh, you have to go through who is, so it might be a bit uh, more cumbersome. So this would uh, make it easier to have access to that information and would make it more transparent. The text is there. There is no current text, so we are proposing adding a new item where it says uh, LACNIC will make public uh, a log of the micro assignments uh, performed, uh, recovery and evolutions uh, um, uh, on the special uh, reserve for IP4 addresses for critical infrastructure. We wanted to make it to be made available to the community. And in a, in a way, we want to protect ourselves uh, against a risk. And if there is a part of the community that considers that this potential risk, then we want to respond to that. We have five minutes left. Oh, five. Well, thank you, Hernan, Ricardo, and Edwin. Now we invite Franco, or Franco Carobrera, of the staff of LACNIC, to present the impact analysis in five minutes.
Good morning. Bueno, eh, ¿cómo está? All right, uh, let's have the impact analysis. First of all, we understand that uh, um, LACNIC should offer a list of uh, the current uh, resource holders. So as to the recommendations, we don't have any for this proposal. And, well, this proposal requires time for implementation and coordination with uh, the NIRs. Thank you. Thank you, Franco. Well, I think that there's a spoiler because we, we agree with uh, LACNIC's approach that respects the spirit of what we are seeking. Through an updated publication, we would see if there are micro assignments uh, as, or uh, micro assignments that could uh, no longer be valid. Uh, let's say that uh, they will no longer be uh, valid. I, th I think that that uh, uh, is uh, consistent with the spirit. Now, I want to say something to the community. This time, we circulated the list. Uh, we, 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 we circulated the proposal in the list, in the mailing list, uh, to hear, to listen to some feedback from uh, the uh, community. And uh, s some people sent the feedback, and uh, we wanted to thank you for your feedback, uh, especially for some comments that we considered. And now we'd like to hear your view. Thank you. Now. Let's start uh, the debate. So please share your views, uh, your opinions, and your comments about this proposal. We have uh, three microphones that are there in the uh, aisles. Uh, we, you have uh, the uh, um, Q&A panel, too, in the Zoom uh, version, or you may request uh, 
the floor by raising your hand and uh, you'll be given the microphone. Each question, for each question there you have up to two minutes to be uh, read and up to two to be defended by the author. We are going to be uh, checking time uh, here. So uh, we remind you that there is simultaneous translation, so we request you to please speak uh, slowly and using your native language. Please also state who you are, name, organization, and uh, your position, whether you're in favor or against. And if you're against, please state why. Jordi. Good morning, Jordi Palette. I was one of the people who made the comments in the list, and I wanted to support this proposal. I think that it's good, and hopefully we'll reach consensus. But I do want to make a comment. I already mentioned that this in the mailing list, and not just limited to this proposal. I think that we have to get used to that those proposals that uh, speak of resources may uh, refer to both IPv4 and IPv6. I understand that uh, it also applies to IPv6, but I think that we should uh, anticipate that and we're just, um, well, but I, I support the proposal. I endorse it as is. Yes, Geordie. Thank you. Precisely. You were one uh, of the people who sent uh, the contribution, and, and we uh, paid heed to what you say because, uh, as a matter of fact, we this the working group uh, thought of it, but we prioritized uh, this reserve that there is none in IPv6, and that's why we didn't incorporate it. But uh, thank you for your comment, Wesley. Wesley Korea Telecom uh, uh, SP Solutions, and I also agree with the spirit of the proposal, and I support the proposal, and I I understand your pain knowing that IXP is a critical uh, infrastructure and we need to manage these resources well. But I especially have a doubt that I didn't understand very well from the text if the log is going to be just a log, a file, where you are going to have a list of uh, who is there and who has been assigned the resource or whether that is going to be reflected in the who is too. I understand that the who is has that information. Now, what we are uh, proposing is that, in addition, you should publish the slash 15 reflecting the current uh, state. And if there are any changes, we sort of refresh it. So I think that uh, you should be able to detect uh, new assignments. I don't think it's very likely. And if you make this. Uh, uh, information uh, public, the chance for having somebody bypass, uh, dodge the controls already is, is significantly reduced. But I think that with this way, uh, an, again, an IXP that disappears uh, needs to return them. So uh, the idea is, of course, to publish everything. Thank you. Before we go on, would, did, did you want to say anything, uh, Wesley, as a reference both for you and for the entire community? In the policy manual, there's another section say, saying that you can, well, uh, have it, uh, you, uh, the, it doesn't, you can log uh, the resources that were returned, but uh, it doesn't say how, and I think that LACNIC already has experience with that, and they're going to uh, do the right thing, and that's the best way to report it. But. You might say, well, we want it to be here or that, and that is why I want to tell you that in the past we did it like that, and it's public, but the, it, indeed the, uh, the policy manual does not state where it is published. Go ahead. I'm Norberto Farias. I agree with the proposal. As a comment, I'd like to add that beyond the topic of publishing this and also participating in the use of these resources as an IXP will also receive resources from there. We have to bear in mind that the waiting list for those persons who don't need this for critical resources is of nine years. And I see a view very favorable to clearly say that those immediately available resources are assigned to those, the correct persons. Good morning. Carlos Sanabria from Bolivian Traffic Exchange Point. 
I support the proposal submitted by Hernan. Let me make a comment, just one comment. Traffic exchange points normally are critical infrastructure, and quite obviously, the issue of resources should also be critical. In addition to that, in the association, the issue uh, the number of requirements has become uh, more stringent to joining lanc -IX. So precisely this is because time is required so that traffic exchange point becomes operational. And because there are not so many of us, this control is more effective. So uh, thank you. I'd like to close with that. Franco. We have a question from Fernando Frigliani in the chat in Portuguese. In this new list, this will also publish the recent assignments in this pool. Is that so? Yes, we understand that is our request, but LACNIX considers all the macro assignments of that slash 15. Douglas? Let me make a comment on what Wesley mentioned regard, regarding Douglas from Brazil. These are attributes included in the object, and you're speaking about who is. So this will change, and this will then lead to a query. So like Sergio mentioned, they can do this better than everyone else, so that's their job. So my question is, so before going over to the question, I'm quite in favor of this proposal, and I'm very happy about it, and I thank you for this. Now, in the text containing the arguments, you specifically referred to the IXPs, but when you speak about critical infrastructure, there, there are other points. I understand that that is the case, but I'd like to verify if you have publicly clarified that this public list will include other resources in addition to the IXPs. I suppose that will be the case, but please can you uh, clarify that? I'm Ricardo Patara. Yes, the idea is that this includes everything. This proposal, although it is focused on that issue that was raised in the question regarding the IXPs, everything that is in that slash 15 regarding critical infrastructure will be included in that list. Thank you very much. A questions on the other mic? And then you get the, you, you'll be given the mic. Good morning. I'm Wilder Murillo from the University of San Andres in La Paz, Bolivia. This proposal regarding policy implementation receives full support. However, should receive full support. However, I'd like to call your attention to convey an uh, important request. In the academia in Bolivia, for us, it has been impossible to become part of the government IXP. We see the need of taking measures in order to have academic traffic exchange between all universities. Recently this year, we have been trying to do this through the government. So the suggestion is to please consider the academia so that the universities that are part of LACNIC can somehow be represented in LAX IX. That is the situation. Thank you. Franco, someone in the Zoom is asking for the floor, Franco Bermejo. Franco? Mm -hmm. 
Did you give him the mic? Yes. The microphone has been enabled for the person who raised the hand in the Zoom. Franco, Frankel, Frankel Bermejo, you have the floor in the Zoom. Your microphone has been enabled. Can you hear us? Frankel? Frankel, can you hear us? Your microphone has been enabled. So let us go on with the next question. Oscar. Oscar Robles from LACNIC, just to specify something. When we speak about presenting this information, we are referring to a repository, to an image of the database of what already is in the WHOIS and what is already in the database. We haven't considered the need of changing the database or including special attributes, but rather this is a repository that gives us the photograph at that moment of the assignments resulting from that assignment of that block. This is so that we can understand what we're referring to. We speak about making this information transparent. Yes, you have the floor. Thank you. I'm Nicolas Antonielo, speaking on a personal uh, road. I first want to say that I'm fully in favor of this policy. Anything that can contribute to give greater transparency to the community regarding the assignment mechanisms for these critical resources is most positive and most welcome. I'd like to make two comments. One is Uh, something that has to do with uh, wording. I think this doesn't even require producing another version of this policy, but this rather has to do with reorganizing the text in the justification. I understand that the objective of this policy is to contribute to transparency, particularly, and my suggestion is that part of the text, when it describes the discussion stating that there already is a mechanism in place in the event of detecting any issues with the assignment, can do so and report LACNIC, this to LACNIC so that the adequate procedure is followed. So I would include that rather to the end of the justification so that it is clear that the main objective is to contribute to the transparency and not to generate an auditing mechanism. So that was the comment. And the second comment, this was already mentioned by Oscar, but rather to express my opinion, this, this has to do with the segmentation in LACNIC, but we can provide the input. So I wouldn't do this with an attribute affecting the who is because this would otherwise change things. And some of those who have addresses from those pool will have differences, and this would imply having different attributes. In addition to the work having a new attribute, and this would affect that. So I think this would be a list in some site to be defined by LACNIC so that LACNIC can define this, including all the assignments, present and future of that specific IP4 address block. Thank you. Any further comments or questions in the Zoom? Yes, a question by Fernando Frediani. This is a comment to clarify things, and I think this has to do with the authors. Resources assigned by these pools for IXPs are to be used in the infrastructure of the IXP itself and not for the participating autonomous systems. Can you please repeat the question, because there is a lot of echo? 
This is a comment to clarify things because I think this has to do with what the authors have mentioned. The assigned resources for that IXP pool are these for use in the ISP's lands or for the participating autonomous systems? Alfredo Verderoso from LACNIC staff, yes, these are be, to be used in the infrastructure of the IXPs and not by the members, the associates. Thank you. I would like to answer the following. This policy seeks to cast transparency on the micro assignments, but not on the criterion followed for the micro assignments. So, I don't know whether this answers the comment. Douglas, regarding Fernando's comment, I agree with what he said, but I think this has not been considered in this policy because it has a different purpose. So this would be an excellent initial step, a f a first step, but we'll be developing a new policy, and if anyone else wishes to do so, we can in the future create a policy having a ROA for the assigned resources to the IXPs. So in this way, we can inhibit the use of those IPs to do natting and to go out to the internet. That's not the purpose of these blocks, and that is not the purpose of this policy either. I find it very interesting to comment on this. And so as not to go into the small details, I really thank you for this policy. Casi lo mismo que dijo Douglas, en realidad, el, la interpretación nuestra de esta política es una política que nos instruye a nosotros como staff de LACNIC en caso de alcanzar consenso a generar una nueva fuente de datos como ya hemos tenido otras políticas en el pasado, como tenemos el delegate de extend, del transfer log, el archivo de... <coughs> con las subasignaciones para la geolocalización, son fuentes de datos que a lo largo de los años la comunidad nos pidió que generáramos. Esta es una más, esa es nuestra interpretación de eso. Y bueno, lo que dijo Douglas, en realidad el alcance de la política es ese, tal como nosotros la interpretamos. Bueno, further comments? Yes. I am from Nick B. R. I am totally in favor of this policy. I don't know whether we understood this properly. So as from the moment in which you list the assignments, we will be able to know the availability, how much is available to be used, or also for how long we'll be able to have this reserve. In other words, from then onwards, only with IPv6. That's a good question, Julio. The policy doesn't mention that, but if I'm not wrong, uh, the LACNIC staff uh, can inform that. There's already information available of how many IP addresses that are still uh, uh, there in this slash 15 for a critical infrastructure that has already been made public in the LACNIC system. Ariel, short, in favor. 
Thank you for the proposal, and I want to emphasize that it's good that beyond the fact that the log may be readable by any mortal, we could also include that uh, from the programmatic point of view, maybe there is a misbehavior, and we may find uh, people that uh, are repeating uh, uh, misbehaviors, uh, maybe automa automated too. So if we have no more comments, we thank you all for sharing your views and uh, asking questions. We want to thank the authors for presenting it. A round of applause for the authors. So now we'll uh, measure the temperature of the room to uh, consider this when measuring consensus. We remind you that even if Zuma tells you to vote, what we are doing is actually not voting, but we are probing, uh, measuring the temperature of the room. Whatever the results, that doesn't mean uh, that uh, this proposal is uh, sent for consensus. The consensus is evaluated uh, after receiving uh, the feedback in the list, and by no means should this be considered a voting process. So are you ready? So if you are, let's probe the room temperature. Please. Send a poll for those that are uh, remote. Well, send the poll. This is, and for those of you here in the room, the staff of LACNIC will count. Please raise your hands if you agree with this proposal, if you endorse it. Keep your arm raised. Pueden bajar la mano. So now you can put your hands down. Now, raise your hands if you're against this proposal. Thank you. Put your hands down and now raise your hand if you abstain. Thank you. You can uh, put your hands down. Thank you, staff. The proposal LAC 2024 Log for the assignment of the Special Reserve of IPv4 addresses for critical infrastructure. The, the initial discussion period uh, will be over on November the 4th, from, and so from then on, and in 12 weeks, uh, the evaluators will uh, tell the community whether the proposal reached consensus or not. Well, so. Here, we put an end to the first session of the Public Policy Forum. We'll uh, continue with uh, this uh, after the break. But before we leave, I wanted to invite you to the activity of exchanging T-shirts. This is a network space during the afternoon coffee break at 4 p.m. So it's a, we, you will have five minutes each for this exchange and in the same order as you come into the room. So let's go to the break, and then we'll resume with the same activity.